I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. Okay, as promised, I'm back with a video um, with the Mossberg 640KD uh, Chuckster. And now, if you're just getting into groundhog hunting or, or any type of varmint hunting, um, and if you're looking for an inexpensive quality gun, the Mossberg is a gun that you may want to consider. Now, they didn't cut any costs in the barrel. Uh, this, this barrel is probably one of the most accurate barrels for a 22 Magnum uh, that I've seen out there in the industry. And now the only thing they did here, now this looks like it's walnut, but actually this is a birch stock. And they did that to, to uh, cut down on the cost to make it affordable for all of us. So they did stain it a walnut stain. But today, as I promised earlier, um, I'm going to zero this rifle in at 100 yards. We had just put on a new scope, if you watched my previous video, uh, where we got it on paper at 25 yards, and then we moved to 50 yards just to zero it in a little bit closer. So when we go to 100 yards, like we are today, we'll be able to do it more precisely, a little bit faster. Okay, so this is a Crimson Trace scope, four by 12. And um, this is by Brushline. At the time this video is being made, they're about around $150. And, but if you're going to be varmint hunting with a 22 Magnum, a 4x12 is something you'll want to consider over a 3x9, for instance, especially if you're going to be reaching out to what this gun is capable of uh, shooting at, and that's about 150 yards. And even at 150 yards of the 22 Magnum, say at 1,910 feet, like we're going to be zeroing this rifle in with, has about 114 pounds of foot pounds of energy left at 150 yards. So you'll definitely be able to take a groundhog out or any other varmint at that distance, okay? So we're, we're gonna get it as close as we can. Um, I wanna see some tight groupings today at 100 yards, and this barrel is capable of doing that. So next thing I want to talk about is the ammunition. And um, the thing is, is you want to zero your, your gun in, your hunting gun in, with the ammo that you're going to hunt with. So we're going to be using the Winchester um, 22 Magnum here, 40 grain at 1,910 feet per second, okay? That's what we're going to hunt with, and that's what we're going to zero the rifle in with, okay? I did, at the start, at 25 yards, start to get it on paper with the CCI. Now the CCI uh, 22 Magnum, uh, this is, these are the total metal jacket, and these are 40 grain, 1875 feet per second. These are really good target loads. Um, if you're looking for something that's readily available at your gun store, uh, you'll probably find these, uh, and they're, they're pretty accurate. So this is what I would suggest if you're going to just use your rifle for target shooting. Okay, so we're not going to use these today. We're going to just concentrate with the Winchester. And now since this is my friend's gun, he has the same box of ammunition that he will be hunting with. So he'll know that I zeroed this rifle in with the Winchester uh, 40 grain power points. These are power points. And they call them power points nowadays because they're more aerodynamic than the old school days with the hollow points so and these are uh 1910 feet per second okay so let's get started uh i got it on 12 power of course all right and we're going to start with the lower target all right so let's go ahead and load up here take the safety chamber flag out all right this is important to have when you're at the gun range so when people go down to get their targets they'll always check to see if your gun has a safety flag in it so and if you're by yourself you should have a safety flag too so even though this is in a lead sled you want it into your shoulder as far as you can get it okay
All right, let's turn the GoPro on. Right. Lower target. I'm putting my crosshairs right in the middle of the bullseye. Now the, the upper target has a lot bigger bullseye, but I wanna, I wanna make it tougher on myself and, and we're gonna start with that smaller bullseye on the bottom. All right, here we go. Squeeze the trigger. The sun has just popped out, so I'm going to have to pull my hat down a little bit. Brought it up a little bit. Now, put your crosshairs where you've been firing. So I'm going to put it right again in the middle of the bullseye. Okay, you see where they're grouping? So I shot some, I shot three. Okay, the scope is one half MOA. So at 100 yards, that translates into two clicks equals one inch. All right, so I want to come up an inch and over about an inch. So let's start with that. One, there's two, two up, and to the right, two. You might have to put on your glasses so you can read that. Leave the caps off. You don't need to keep taking them off and on, uh, but don't lose them. All right, let's see where that puts us. See if our adjustments helped. Well, that one's the elevation is better on that one, but but the uh, still over to the right a little bit. But make sure you shoot at least three or five when you make adjustments. That was a really good one there. It's getting a lot closer now. See, now it, it's at uh, about a half inch and a little bit high off the bullseye.
check to see. It's got a spawn clear. Go to the upper target. So again, putting the bullseye or putting the crosshairs right on the bullet center of the bullseye. Looks like it shot low. All right, fire. Let's fire five of them. There we go. I think that hit the same hole. And my last shot, because that hole looked like it got there all of a sudden. You know, most of those are telling me I'm over to the right, aren't they? I think that was it. I'm not sure. I, think I hit on top of the hole that I'd hit in that now. Yeah. So let's go one click because. This is a one-half MOA scope here on the adjustments. So two clicks equals one inch at 100 yards. So we just want to go a half an inch to the left. So make sure you see which go in the correct direction. There's one click. And I think that was the last one. So let's load five more in here.
Look at my spiny scope. I think this is the last one, yeah. Okay, we may have to change targets here. So let's go one more click over to the left. Okay, we moved it over to the left. Uh, I'm going to go put a different target on there before I waste any more ammunition. Let me look in the spotting scope before I go down there and see. No. I'm not seeing where those are shooting. All right, so let's go put a different target on there. Uh, I don't know if they're going through the same hole or not. So instead of wasting ammunition, it's just best just to go ahead and change the change the target. That's one of these sticky things, so I didn't have to bring down the, the stapler to put it on here. Now these splatter targets, you have to be careful, you know, because you can scratch them real easy. And if you scratch them, then it makes it look like a, a hole when you look through the spotting scope. So be really careful when you put these on. Okay, so we got a, a good placement here. But I'm glad this happened because this is, this is good to see. Um, what happens if you're, you, you know, I hope I was hitting in the same holes. Because um, I don't have that much ammunition left here. Uh, I've gone through a box of 50 close to it. I think I got eight or nine left. So hopefully this will, it won't take more than this box to get it zeroed. But if that happens to you, you know, it's just better just to change the target. When in doubt, just, just change the target. You know, I, I don't want to stick any more of those uh, little circles in there to cover up the bullet holes because, especially when, you, when you're getting so close, you might as well just use a brand new target. And they're a couple bucks. So, so we're going to shoot at that fresh target on top now. Okay, um, I didn't make any more adjustments, so I left it where it was. over to the left a little bit. 
All right, now remember, I went one click more than I should have to the left, so I'm gonna go back to the right. Okay, one click. I usually shoot a group of three or five before I do something like that, but I don't have much ammo left, so. It helped going back over to the right a little bit. But, uh, okay, here we go. I want to say that was right above the other one. That I just shot. I'm not sure. Let's check it out once. Yep, and that's in the bullseye. All right, so they're two really nice close together there. to the right a little bit. And that was that one looks like it was low. I did not see where that went, unless it's on top of the bullseye. I think I got two left. The last one. Okay. No, oh, I got one more. Let's see where that's hit and we'll put the safety on. Okay. 
<sighs> yeah, I'm getting a really good, decent grouping. Even with the wind that's kicked up a little bit, I went through a box of shells to do it, box of 50. But uh, it was well worth it. We got one more. <clears throat> but uh, all right, turn the safety off. That's it. So, um, this grouping is really good. I think there was like a couple uh, bullets that went through here. So these are all close to that bullseye. And this is a really small bullseye, so um, that's good um, for 100 yards. Now, I had a couple down here, but um, Still, groundhog, you would have hit the groundhog. Might not have hit him in the head, but I would have hit him in the neck down here. But most of them are grouping right around in here. And so, um, you know, this is a new piece of cardboard, so I didn't have any go clear off here to the sides at all. All right, so there we have it. I mean, this grouping looks really good right here. And I would say it's um, zero it in. Um, right now, the winds are really light. I don't feel any winds at all out here. So um, this rifle is zeroed in. So you can trust it to go out to 150 yards now. And probably at 150 yards, you're probably going to have at least a five, six inch drop. This is zeroed in at 100 yards. Uh, and if you wanted to test the drop out to 150, um, you could do that. And it wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, so it's going to depend if my friend wants me to do that. And, uh, so I'll let it up to him. But I'd say our grouping at 100 yards is really good. I had one low one there, uh, but I didn't make any adjustments after I, after I did that real, that low one. You know, it could have been the wind, because uh, we have increased in the wind here um, since we started. But uh, they're grouping nice. Um, and it looks like I went through um, some of the same holes that I was, uh, that I shot first. So, which is really, really good. And it tells you it's a really good barrel too. So, but um, I appreciate you joining me today and experiencing the, uh, where you want to zero a varmint rifle in a 22 magnum uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button share it with your friends and make sure you leave me a comment and let me know that you like this video and anything else you want to tell me but thanks again for watching